Gee whiz. Hello, friends. My name is John Henderson. Welcome to this series of old-time radio show episodes called Gee Whiz. These are stories of the schemes, trials, and loves of the typical American teenagers, Andy Hardy, Archie Andrews, and Henry Aldridge. Come with me back to a time before social media, before text messaging, before email, a time where if you wanted to communicate with somebody in another city, you might write them a letter. This episode of The Aldrich Family is from January 23rd, 1941. The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone. Entertainment for all the family, brought to you by Postum, a tempting, wholesome drink for all the family. Postum. Welcome once again to a visit with the Aldrich family. And since this program is intended primarily for your amusement, we hope there's nothing to interfere with your sitting back and enjoying the fun. Of course, if something does interfere, if perhaps you're troubled by a touch of indigestion, we suggest that for the moment you be practical about it. Now, while you think of it, consider whether coffee may cause your indigestion. Whether you wouldn't benefit by drinking Postum instead. You see, while coffee is popular with most people, and while many people can drink it without feeling distress, many others cannot. So by all means, if you think coffee upsets you, switch to Postum. For Postum contains no stimulants, nothing upsetting in any way. Just drink fragrant, flavorful Postum instead of coffee, and see if before long your indigestion hasn't gone. See if you don't feel lots more human again after you give Postum a fair trial. There is a neat white house at 117 Elm Street in Centerville. It's the home of the Aldriches and an average American family. Their son, Henry, is typical of any teenage youngster. He's lively, adventurous, a real boy. Tonight we find Henry in the living room with his mother and father. But why do you say that, dear? Because, Mother, because I don't want to get mixed up with anybody. But, Henry, simply writing a letter to a girl doesn't mean you're in love with her. It could be taken that way. And I'm not even interested in her. You're not even interested in whom? In Doris Townsend, Father. When did you see her? I didn't see her. I had a letter, just an ordinary short letter from her. And Mother thinks I ought to sit right away and and answer it. Well, Henry, I think she ought to know the truth. The truth about what? About me getting married. Getting what? Married. That's what the letter's about, Father. She says... Dear Henry, we happen to read in the centerable section of last evening's Middletown paper that a Mr. and Mrs. Aldridge announced the engagement of their son. Is this you? If so, Mother says congratulations. Father says who's the lucky girl. Sincerely, Doris. How did a thing like that get into the paper? It's a very simple mistake, Sam. The older dice boy over on Maple Street is going to be married sometime next spring. Oh. And that's why I think Henry should take the time to write to Doris. But, Mother, why don't we just put a denial in the paper? Then everybody will be satisfied. Henry, I think your mother would like you to write a letter. But, Father, I'm due at Nancy Adams right this minute. She's probably sitting over at her house wondering why I'm not there. And here I am here. But, Henry, by this time you could have had the letter written. Not and explain things properly, Mother. Henry, you're to write the letter tonight. Tonight? Now. Now? Now, Sam, if Nancy Adams is waiting, I don't think it's quite as important as that. I thought you wanted him to write it. I do, dear, but after all, why can't he be home by 9.30 and write her a postcard before he goes to bed? Yes, Mother, that's the least I can do. Are you sure you'll come home early? Yes, Mother. Alice, you don't think he ought to write it before he goes? Sam, Henry's promised to be here by 9.30. And gee, Father, you know me. When I promise to do a thing, I break my neck doing it. think 
so, Henry? Oh, sure, Nancy. You take any marriage. Gee, the average marriage, I think that when a person's... You know what I mean? Well, as a matter of fact, Henry... Well, I think they ought to have a diversity of interests. My, you've thought about this a lot, haven't you? It's just common sense. Suppose a man marries a girl and all they both like is the same thing. Like, take gardening, for instance. I don't know why I take gardening, but some people do. And they have one. I don't mean a little one, naturally. It's a big one. Lots of acres, like a, say, like a ranch. Did you know they raise cotton in Arizona? Who does? The people in Arizona. The married people? I guess both kinds. Why do you ask? I just wondered whether you know anyone out there. No, I just may go to school out there. Really, Henry? I know a boy that goes to school there. In Arizona? Yes, I had a letter from him just day before yesterday. Is that right? Would you like to have me get it and read you some of it? No, I don't believe I'd care to hear it. Well, I'm sure you'd be interested, Henry. He writes beautifully. Well, the way I look at it, Nancy, if a person gets the idea he has to go all the way to Arizona to go to school, I don't think they deserve to have any state. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Well, you take a school. Suppose you're not crazy about it. It's not the fault of the government of the state, is it? No. Well, there you are. Your father's a taxpayer, isn't he? Yes. I never thought of it that way, Henry. Just a second while I answer the phone. Have you ever tasted peppermint crunch ice cream? No, I haven't. Why? They served it in the school cafeteria today. It was pretty good. Hello? Nancy, this is Homer. Is Henry there? Yes. Tell him I've got to speak to him. Henry! Is that my mother? It's Homer. He wants to speak to you. Oh, gee whiz, I can't even go visiting without his bothering me. Hello? Now listen, Homer. Henry, I'm in a terrible predicament. What's the matter? I'm over at your house and I want some help on our Latin assignment. Well, I can't come home just for that, Homer. But Henry, I have to have it. My father says I've been fiddling around too much in Latin. But gee whiz... I don't have to be home until 9.30, and even then I'm going to be very busy writing a postcard. All right, Henry, all right. If you want to put Nancy Adams in your correspondence ahead of my homework, all right. You mean you're going home again? No, I'll wait. But your father says to be here not a second later than 9.30. Well, gee, I'll be there. I've got plenty of time. So long. Henry, you through? Sure. I just ran up to get some of Dick's letters. Who's? Dick's. You're so interested in Arizona, I thought you'd like to have me read some parts of them. Did he write all the letters in that bundle? My goodness, he's been writing ever since last Christmas when I met him. Oh. I don't think he's missed a week since then. Here's one about Arizona's irrigation ditches. To you? Yes. Very interesting. He says, My dear Nancy, did I see a ditch today? It began miles in back of me and came up to me and then went as far as the eye of man could reach. When one realizes that all of this was dug with human hands, it makes one proud to be a member of this human race of ours. After that, we went dancing, and I certainly wished you were there. They danced in the ditch? No. That was afterwards. And then he goes on to say... What? Oh, my goodness, I can't read you that. Oh. oh. Here's one. Well, well, Nancy, here I am writing again. Didn't you scream, Henry? You'd certainly die if you ever met him. Yeah. He's got a nice sense of humor. Your letter came this morning, and I have read it at least... No, no sense in reading that. Now, let's see. I have your picture on my bureau... No. Oh, here's something interesting. Here's something wonderful. Yesterday, a crowd of us saw the Grand Canyon. Boy, is that something. Is he only interested in ditches? He's interested in everything, Henry. I'd let you read it yourself, only there's some rather personal things in it. Naturally. Of course... Is that clock on the mantel right? Yes, I think so. Well, gee, I didn't realize it was nearly 8.35. You mean you have to go? I'll say I have. Why so early? Well, I've got to help Homer with his Latin, and then I've got to write a long letter. Oh. Boy, am I ashamed of myself. I bet there are at least four letters from her, from this person. I haven't even started to answer. Well, I'm certainly glad you came over. She'll, the person, <clears throat> will be wondering what's been keeping me. Does she live very far away, Henry? No, just in Middletown. But her family's thinking of moving to California, and then, of course, my letters will have to be longer. Well, I'm awfully sorry you have to go. Good night, Nancy. And I, I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed hearing your correspondence. <laughs> Wait a second, Homer, while I drop this postal card in the mailbox. It's a nice night, isn't it? 
Let's walk back to the house. Did you ever notice, Henry, when you look up at the moon, it looks as though the clouds were standing still and the moon is what's moving? So what? What's the matter with you, Henry? Nothing's the matter with me. Well, why'd you come home from Nancy so early for? Well, you want me to help you with your Latin, didn't you? She was... Do you know how many times she's... How many times she's gotten letters from him? Who's gotten what? Every week, Homer. Every week since last Christmas. All he talks about is ditches. Who? And in the meanwhile, she goes around leading other people on. Into ditches? <laughs> Anybody think that just because somebody you happen to know casually is going to school where you aren't going to school, then gee whiz, he's pretty wonderful. Who is? Who cares how deep the Grand Canyon is? Do you? I ask you. I'm going home. Well, go ahead. And not only that, Homer, Nancy's been writing to this guy just as often as he's been writing to her. Oh. Oh. Well, do you know what you ought to do, Henry? Why should I do anything? You ought to show her, though. All you have to do is write a letter to some other girl and leave it lying around where Nancy will see it. You're crazy. You talk as though I cared, Homer. But she'll eat right out of your hand, Henry. My own sister used to do it. She did? Sure, every week. Did it get results? Well, she's married, isn't she? Married? Just from that? Well, you don't have to let it go that far if you don't want to. The only trouble is I don't know of any other girl I'd want to write to. You don't have to. You aren't going to mail it. You're just going to write it and let Nancy see it. Now, how about this girl you just mailed the postcard to? Doris Townsend? Well, gee whiz, Homer, I could hardly get up enough interest to write that much to her. Well, I'll tell you what to say. I remember my sister's letters. Only when you write it, Henry, do it on your father's typewriter. Don't write it in your own handwriting. Why not? Because it isn't romantic enough. Okay, and I'll type it on some blue paper. Have some toast, Alice? No, thank you. Sam, I'm worried. Worried? Well, dear, I don't like to mention it, but this morning when I went in to make Henry's bed, I happened to see a letter he'd typed to Doris Townsend. I thought he was just going to send her a postcard. Well, so did I, Sam. I thought the whole thing was just a casual, ordinary bit of correspondence. Well? Well, Sam, I shouldn't have looked at it, but I couldn't help noticing that the letter began, My darling Doris. What's that? That's what it said, Sam. I saw it with my own eyes. What else did he say? Well, naturally, dear, I didn't read any more. Why not? Well, because it was a personal letter. But it was your duty as a mother to read it. Well, if you must know, I did read the first sentence. <laughs> but that's all. What did it say? Your letters have been coming through regularly, and you will never know how they have changed my entire life. You mean that letter she wrote him wasn't the first one? No, dear. Apparently, that's why Doris Townsend was so concerned. She was afraid Henry really was engaged. You mean you think it's reached that point? I know it has. The only thing is, why did he insist last night that he didn't want to write to her? Well, that's obvious, Alice. He was trying to cover up that... Cover up Cover that... up what? I don't know. Well, Sam, I think it's time we did something. Do you see her, Henry? Sure, she's sitting right there on the school steps. And your letter's right in front of her. But what good will it do, Homer? You dropped it so darn far from her. I dropped it practically at her feet, Henry. And look, she's got it. She's reading it. She is? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Is she going to get a shot? Didn't I tell you, Henry? The only trouble is, Homer, that isn't my letter. Mine's still on the ground. It is. Homer, can you see where the one she's reading is from? How could I? All I can see is it's a fat one. A fat one? See, I wonder... Do you suppose... Well, if it is from Arizona, don't let it get your goat, Henry. But, Homer, she doesn't have to read his letters right here on the school grounds. Wouldn't you think she'd have some loyalty to our school? Look, Henry, she's standing up. Oh, boy. She's leaning over. She's... Well, gee whiz, she's only tying her shoelace. Homer, is she blind? She's even stepping on my letter. Now she's going into the building. Quick, Henry. Why? Your letter's blowing away. Well, gee whiz, Homer, you go that way and we'll corner it. Hurry up. I'm hurrying. <laughs> Where is she, Homer? She's right there in the corridor, talking to Eleanor Wentworth. You think she saw you when you slipped my letter into her coat pocket? How could she? I was talking too fast. Well, she certainly can't miss this one. And I think it's better than the letter that blew away yesterday. Look, look, Nancy's walking away. Well, t she puts her hand in her pocket. All my troubles will be over. The only thing is, Homer... Why? Isn't that my letter sticking out of Eleanor's pocket? Where? Listen, Homer, did you put that in the wrong pocket or the wrong coat? I didn't know they were standing that close together. 
I saw a pocket and I dropped it in. Well, we've got to get that away from Eleanor. I can get it away from her, Henry. We'll just catch up with her, and as we pass, we'll both gently bump into her and I'll grab. Okay, Homer, but don't trip her. Quiet, Henry. Do you want her to hear us? I'm not talking too loud, Homer. Come on now. We'll give her the brush off. Well, gee whiz. Hello, Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. Oh, gee whiz. Homer Brown, did you hurt yourself? Homer. Oh, I'm awfully sorry if I turned like that. I'm going into the girls' coat room here. I know, but Eleanor... Let me pick up my books, Henry. But Eleanor, wait, wait. Henry, don't follow her in there. You'll be expelled. <laughs> After all, if I were a boy and knew a girl as nice as Doris Townsend, I think I'd want a picture of her. Wouldn't you, Sam? Uh, wouldn't I what? Like a picture of Doris Townsend. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I wouldn't. I just... I just... You just what? I just don't think I like any girls. Not any? No, Father. Good, that's fine. Uh, didn't I hear you using my typewriter upstairs just a few minutes ago? Yes, Father. What was it you were typing, dear? Why... Just something I was doing over. I typed it night before last, and it blew away yesterday. Then I did another last night, and that got lost today. Through an error. I see. Homework, dear? Why, in a way, you might say it was sort of homework. I was talking with Nancy Adams' mother today. She, she says Nancy is writing to some boy out in the school in Arizona. She is? If I were you, I'd take a little interest. Well, I'm not going to waste my time on her, Mother. You'll never find a nicer girl. Gee whiz, Father, I have other things to think about besides just girls. Gee whiz, I've got a lot of other things on my mind. Where are you going, dear? Just upstairs and do a little... do a little typing. Sam. Well? If you think we ought to come right out and forbid his writing any more letters to Doris Townsend... Now, Alice, let's not make matters any worse than they are. It's much better to be subtle about it. You can't tell. He may be up in his room right this minute wondering whether Doris Townsend is worth it. That's the way a boy's mind operates. Well, of course, dear. You know more about it than I do. Oh, Butch. Butch Ralph. What do you have, Eleanor? Butch, did you lose a letter? No, why? You didn't. Don't you go around with a girl over in Middletown by the name of Doris Townsend? Sure, I take her out practically every weekend. Well, I don't know how it got there, but I found this letter addressed to her in my coat pocket, and I thought it was probably yours. Let's see it. Here you are. Well, listen, this isn't any kind of a joke, is it? Oh, no. My darling Doris. Say, what is this? Was it from Butch? Who wrote it? But getting back to Earth, I hope someday I can show you the Mississippi, which is 2,470 miles long... Reaching at some points to a width of four miles. What? Hey, what I want to know is who wrote this? Where's the end? Have you ever noticed on a moonlight night how the clouds seem to stand still and the moon zooms along at a breathtaking pace? That's how I think of you. Oh. Oh, so that's who wrote it. Who did write it? Never mind. He isn't going to live long anyhow. <laughs> Well, poor Henry is certainly having a tough time getting the right letter to the wrong girl. And whether he ever will manage it is more than I know. But I do know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you'd like to get the right mealtime drink for your family, you really shouldn't miss all the grand things that Postum has to offer you. Believe me, you'll enjoy a good hot cup of Postum for the same reason millions enjoy it. Just because Postum tastes so downright good. Yes, when you pour yourself a steaming cup of Postum and add just a dash of cream and sugar to it, you have a drink that's so tempting in fragrance, so unusually delightful in flavor, that you keep wondering why you never thought of trying it before. Just don't expect Postum to taste like coffee, any more than you'd expect coffee to taste like tea. For naturally, the goodness of Postum is the goodness of a distinctive flavor, a flavor that puts the mmm in Postum. So enjoy delicious hot Postum tomorrow, and be sure to make enough for the young folks to enjoy, too, because Postum is a drink for all the family. Just as your family will be all for Postum. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich, in an attempt to make Nancy Adams jealous, Henry has typed several letters to another girl. But instead of mailing them, he has tried to leave them around where Nancy would find them. 
So far, however, he has been totally unsuccessful and has lost all of the letters he's written. The scene opens now in the typing room at Central High School. Homer, have you any idea where the A would be on this typewriter? Why can't you find it yourself? I haven't you ever seen the typewriters in this classroom? The keys don't have any letters on them. Well, what good are they, then? Oh, gee whiz. Did you get an A? It's a W. Homer, what word is there that begins with W that means the same thing? As what? As angel. Why don't you just make it winged angel? Winged? My winged angel? Sure. Where where do you think the eye would be? Used to be around here somewhere. Are you making plenty of carbon copies this time, Henry? Sure, look out. Oh, gee. Did you get an I? An H. Now what am I going to do? I've got W-H. Why don't you make it white-winged angel? Yeah, that's nice. The only trouble is, Homer, if we don't find it this time, we're really stuck. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Yes, Alice? Sam, I'm sorry to call you away from the office, but I want you to come home right away. What for? Well, Doris Townsend's mother is here. What's on her mind? I can't tell you on the phone, dear, but the sooner you come home, the better. She's terribly upset. Yes? I've come over right away, Alice. But remember this. No matter what she says, the girl is probably just as much to blame as Henry is. Homer, are you sure she finally found my letter? Yes, Henry. I put it right in her lunchbox, right on top of her lemon pie. Are you sure she didn't tear it up or anything? Why should she? A letter written by you to another girl that you're calling a white-winged angel? Well, it took me darn near a week to get it to her. All you have to do now, Henry, is go home. By Monday, Nancy will be eating out of your hands. By Monday? Well, that's the way it works with my sister. Henry! Oh, gee whiz. Hello, Eleanor. Hello, it's Nancy, Henry. Henry. Oh, Henry, I've been looking all over for you. For me? Hi, Nancy. Gee, do you look worried? Well, in a way, I am. I've got something here that belongs to Henry, and I'm quite sure he'd want it. Something of mine? Something of Henry's? Yes, and I haven't the slightest idea how I got it. It's this letter you wrote to somebody. Oh. Oh, yes. But I didn't read it, Henry. I know you'll probably think I did, but I give you my word that I didn't do any more than just look at it to see whose it was. You didn't? Why not? Well, bye, Henry. I'm awfully glad I happened to find you. Goodbye. Thanks very much for giving it back to me. That's a fine thing, Homer. That's a fine thing. Well, what's she got against reading somebody else's mail? After all, if all she cares about is that fellow in Arizona, why should I... There are other girls besides Nancy Adams. Sure there are. That's what I say. Sure there are. She isn't so wonderful. Hiya, fellas. Oh, hello, Willie. Hello. Miss Eggleston wanted me to give you your English paper. You've got mine? Sure, here. Here, Henry. And boy, you better watch out if Butch Wells sees you. Why should I worry about him? But well, didn't you write a letter to his girl in Middletown? Who, me? Sure, to Doris Townsend. It's all over school. Butch knows Doris Townsend? Why not? She's a steady, isn't she? Is that right? And gee, he's the biggest guy in school, Henry. Well, I'd like to see him start something. Henry, how much did you get on your English? C plus. C plus? Listen, Homer, how did Miss Eggleston get this? What is it? It's one of my darn letters to Doris Townsend. How did you happen to hand that in? She says, interesting, but why didn't you stick to original theme instead of dragging in the Mississippi? Well, that's a fair enough criticism. You know, Henry, I'll bet your letters are lying around all over this school. I'll say. Henry, look out. Here comes Butch Welch. Butch? Hey, Henry. Now, wait, Butch. It was all a mistake. Let's take my eye. Come here. Write him a letter, Henry. All right, Aldrich. Hey, Butch, let go of me. What's the idea of trying to cut me out with Doris Townsend? I didn't. You're twisting my arm. Yeah? Hey, Butch, let go of Henry. Go sit down. You make me. Gee whiz. <laughs> Butch! You gonna keep away from my girl? Now, listen, Butch. How do you like that? Oh, gee whiz. Now write her another letter and tell her what I did to you. You want me to help you up, Henry? Henry! Is that you, Nancy? What happened to you? We're looking for something down here. What was Butch Welch doing to Henry? To me? Gee whiz, he wasn't doing anything. Well, my goodness, Henry, your folks just phoned the main office and they said you're to come right home the very minute school's out. I wonder what that could be about. <laughs> I don't see why you have to feel that way about it, Henry. After all, Butch is three times as big as you. Did you brush the back of my coat home? Sure, your folks won't notice a thing. Henry! Yes, Mother, where are you? I want you to come into the living room. Your father and I want to have a talk with you. A talk with I, Mother? Yes, Henry. Has something gone wrong, Father? 
How did you tear your coat pocket? Oh, that? That? Well, gee whiz. Homer, dear, would you mind leaving the room? You want me to go? We do. Please go up to Henry's room until we're through. Couldn't I wait out in the kitchen? You could not. Please go upstairs. Yes, Mrs. Aldrich, I'll wait up there. Now then, Henry. Yes, Father. Your mother wants to have a talk with you. Sam, I think you're the one that should have a talk with him. Aren't you the one Doris Townsend's mother talked to? Doris Townsend's mother? Yes, dear. She's been here. That would be putting it mildly. What? Henry, Doris Townsend was never so upset in her life. She's upset. She's upset. Over the letters you've been writing her. How did she get any of those? What do you mean, how did she get any of them? Haven't you been writing her? I've been... I've been... Look, Father. Have you been writing her? Yes, sir. I've been writing her, but I haven't been mailing them. What have you been doing with them? I've been losing them. <laughs> Henry, don't be absurd. But I have, Mother. If you didn't intend mailing them, why did you write them? Because... They were written to be read by someone, weren't they? Yes, sir, but not by Doris Townsend. Then by whom, dear? Look, Mother, I know you won't believe it, but there are copies of my letter all over Central High School. What do you mean by that? Father, this English paper is a very good example. You mean you failed in English? No, I got a C plus for it. Let me see it. Now, Alice, don't let him evade the issue. We're talking about his letters. But, Sam, this is a letter. To Doris Townsend? Yes, dear. That's what Henry's been trying to tell us. He wrote those letters for English. He never intended to mail any of them. Did you, dear? Well, look, Mother. Of course you didn't. It's as clear as day, Sam. Well... Why did Doris Townsend's mother have to get so upset over a composition? That's exactly what I wonder. Sam, I'm going to the phone and tell her. And give her my regards. Hey, Henry. Henry. Here's your composition, Henry. Oh. Am I interrupting the lecture? You are not interrupting anything, Homer. Only, Henry, next time see to it that you get more than a C+. Plus. Yes, Father. Henry, you know that letter Nancy handed back to you? Yeah. Well, that isn't one of your letters. Whose is it? It's a letter she wrote to the guy in Arizona. From her? Do you mind if I see what it says? Wait, Homer, that letter wasn't meant to be read. What do you mean it wasn't? It isn't even sealed. She said... Now listen, Homer, give that to me. Oh, boy. Homer. Oh, boy. Homer. Oh, boy. Are you... Are you reading it all, Homer? The whole thing's about you. About me? She says you're one of the nicest, sweetest boys she's ever known. Who, me? Henry, you're one of the nicest, sweetest boys she's ever known. Now, wait, Homer. She said that about me? Well, gee whiz, can you imagine that? Henry Aldrich will be back in just a moment. In the meanwhile, folks, a reminder of the double-barreled reason why you like Postum. For one thing, you like it if coffee upsets you. For another, you like it just because Postum tastes so swell. It's a grand, tempting drink for all the family. So get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. No, Mother, I'm... I'm sure I don't feel well enough to go to school today. But, Henry, you'll miss some very important work. No, I won't, Mother. I won't miss a thing. All we were going to do today, anyhow, is read our English compositions in front of the class. And I never felt so low in my life. Here is a popular Christmas suggestion. In addition to your other presents, give United States defense bonds and stamps. Make patriotism a part of your giving. The money you spend for defense bonds helps to resist tyranny and oppression, helps keep the spirit of Christmas alive in this country. So buy defense bonds and stamps, and keep on buying them for yourself and for your friends this Christmas. Be sure to listen again next week to the Aldrich family, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Harry Von Zell saying, You will enjoy fragrant, flavorful Postum. And remember, Postum contains no stimulants. It cannot give you indigestion. Good night. <laughs> That was the Aldrich family from 1941, and now the Archies. Boys and girls, just listen to me, yeah. Boys and girls, oh, listen to me, yeah. I'm gonna tell you about all the things you're dreaming of. Well, it's a meeting at a dance.
In this episode, they use a pressure cooker. What is the principle of pressure cooking, and how does it work? In an open pan, water heats only to boiling. Here's how it works in a pressure cooker. The temperature keeps rising rapidly, which is the reason cooking takes less time than in open pan cooking. The pressure inside the cooker forces the indicator stem upward. At this point, heat is turned down low. One of the hit songs of 1948 was "Hair of Gold, Eyes of Blue." Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm gonna make her mine. That's a song that's gonna get stuck in your head. Here's an episode of Archie from the winter of 1948. of Archie Comics magazine no one loves so well. Archie Andrews and all his gang. And now for our weekly visit to Riverdale. It's early Sunday afternoon as we look in on the Andrews home. We find Mr. Andrews standing in the front hallway and judging by the way he's all dressed up in his Sunday best, the Andrews are about to go someplace. <sighs> Mary, are you ready? Yes, dear, I'm all set. Are you? Yes, dear. I've been waiting here already for five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, dear. And Fred? Yes, dear? I think eating our Sunday dinner out is a wonderful idea. Oh, it's nothing, Mary, nothing. You're certainly entitled to one day off after cooking and washing dishes all week. <laughs> yes, dear, but I still appreciate your suggesting. Well, it's quite all right, dear. I'm glad to do it for you. But come on, let's go. I'm starved. Yes, dear, I'm... Oh, dear. I almost forgot. Forgot? Forgot what? Where's Archie? Why, he's... Oh, for good grief. Well, where is he? I thought he was waiting down here with you. Yeah, well, he isn't. Archie! Archie! Yes, sir? Where the dickens are you? In the bathroom, combing my hair. Oh, all right. Like, Archie! Your mother and I are ready to go out. Would you mind hurrying? I'm hungry. She was sure, Dad. Be right there. All right. Now, you know, that boy is the slowest boy I've... Oh, fine. Oh, now, who can that be? Hello? Yes? Who's this? Uncle Joe. What? Well, Uncle Joe, how are you? Oh, fine. What does he want? And how's Margaret? Good. And the twins? Good. Oh, I'm just fine, Uncle Joe. Yes, Fred's fine, too. Yes, Archie's fine, too. Glad we got that settled. Uh, but what's new, Uncle Joe? We haven't seen you since you had dinner here a year ago. Uh, what? What? You are? The whole family? Uh, why, yes. Yes, by all means. Of course. Yes. Uh, all right, Uncle Joe. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. Now, whatever made that old chiseler call now of all times? Fred, he said it's been so long since they've been here. Seems like yesterday. That he's bringing the family over for a visit. Good. The less I see of them, the... The what? <laughs> bringing them here? Here, yes. But now? This afternoon? Yes, they're leaving right away. Oh, good grief. Mary. Well, Mary, maybe if we hurry, we can get downtown to the restaurant, get our dinner, and be back here before they get here. I... But Fred, we can't. They're coming here for dinner. Yes, I know. That's why we... Well, here for dinner. Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret are having dinner here. Of course. You can't let them sit here all Sunday afternoon without offering them dinner. Oh, no, Mary. Why didn't you tell them we were going out for dinner? I couldn't, Fred. He told me they were all coming over, and that's all there was to it. Oh, good grief. Mary, well, I that can't... Dad. Yes, Archie. But Mary, so... I... Mary, well, I... sure am hungry. Archie, I'm trying to talk to your mother. Do you mind? She was no, Dad, but I thought you were in a hurry to go out for dinner. Archie, I was in a hurry, but it now seems that we're having your Uncle Joe for dinner. She was who can eat him. <laughs> Archie, we are not going to eat him. We are going to entertain him. You mean he's coming here? Yes, with Aunt Margaret and the twins. Oh, boy. Oh, man. 
Mary, isn't there any way we can get out of this? Fred, not now. You can't insult relatives like that. Well, what are you going to feed them? You haven't got a thing ready. I know, dear, I know, but I guess I can get something ready. Um, I can make some vegetable soup, and um, luckily I have a good size, a good size steak in the icebox. But Uncle Joe eats like a wolf that's just come off an 18-day diet. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'll make a lot of potatoes, and... Oh, dear. What's the matter? I just remembered, last night at supper, I noticed we have only three or four potatoes left. Oh, fine. That'll be enough for Uncle Joe. Well, what's everybody else going to eat? Oh, Fred, Uncle Joe doesn't eat that much. But we do need some more potatoes. Archie, you run over to Jughead's house and borrow some potatoes. But, Mom, I wanted to eat out. I'm starved now, and I Archie, don't want to run... we are out. not having dinner out, so you might as well get used to the idea. Oh, unexpected company is unexpected company. Now, run over to Jughead's house and borrow some potatoes. We'll eat as soon as Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret get here. She was okay, Mom. But I don't know how people have the nerve to invite themselves places like that. <sighs> now, Fred, we have no time to spare, so I want you to help me. Oh, now, don't worry, dear. Just tell me what you want me to do. Well, uh, we better get the dinner started right away. You go get the steak out of the icebox, right. and uh, I'll get the vegetables. <laughs> oh, dear. Now what? Look what I just found in the cupboard. A five-pound bag of potatoes. Good. That's just what we need. <laughs> potatoes. Oh, no, Mary. Uh-huh. But we just sent Archie over to Jughead's house to borrow some potatoes. I know it, dear. Maybe you can still catch him. No, not a chance. He's halfway over to Jughead's house by now. Oh, well, we certainly are off to a bad oh, start. Oh, now, 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 don't worry, dear. I'm here to help you. And when Archie gets back, he'll help, too. Yes, dear, I know. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Just when I was expecting to have a fancy dinner in a restaurant, we gotta get company. And I gotta go borrowing potatoes. Fine thing. And I sure hope Jughead has some he can lend us. I don't want to. He was high, Archie. What are you doing here? Oh, hiya, Jughead. I came over to ask a very important favor. Can you lend me some potatoes? Huh? Potatoes, Jug. We're having some unexpected company for dinner, and Mom needs some potatoes. Has your mother got any that she can spare? Gee, I don't know. Well, ask her. I can't. Why not? She isn't home. Isn't home? On a Sunday afternoon? Jug, what are you going to do for dinner? Oh, we had dinner half an hour ago. Then my mother and father went to Newton Center to visit my aunt, but I stayed home. Oh, I see. Well, do you know if your mother has any potatoes that she could spare? Sure she has. Come on in. Oh, gee whiz, that's swell. Oh, we always have lots of potatoes around the house. If there's one thing we like in this house is potatoes. Yes, sir, that's our favorite dish, potatoes. Yes, sir, I can give you all the potatoes you want. Only one thing. Yes. I don't know where they are. Don't know where they are. Jughead, do you mean to say you don't know where your mother keeps the potatoes? No. Do you know where your mother keeps the potatoes? Why, of course I do. Sure I do. Certainly I do. Right in the... Hmm. Come to think of it, I don't know. See, I told you. Hey, I know where they must be. Where? The same place my mother keeps all the vegetables. Where's that? In the vegetable compartment in the refrigerator. Gee, maybe you're right. Sure, that's just where they are. Now, let me see Oranges, lemons, garlic, apples, pears, lettuce, cabbage, spinach... Jug, never mind the menu. Just find the potato. I'm looking, I'm looking. Cauliflower, watercress, celery, parsley, tomatoes. She was... No potatoes. Oh, fine. Jug, you mean to say your mother keeps half a vegetable store in there and no potatoes? It looks like it. Hey, I know just where they are. Where? In the pantry. The pantry? Oh, gee, we're sure. I bet that's where they are. Sure, that's where everybody keeps potatoes. Sure, potatoes don't need to be kept in a refrigerator. Sure. Now, let's see now. Uh, coffee, tea, sugar, salt, pepper, gelatin, soup, cereal, cinnamon, cocoa, coconut, maple syrup, chocolate syrup. Potatoes, Jug, potatoes. I'm looking, I'm looking. Chocolate pudding, salmon, tuna fish, sardines, herring, shortening, I... yeast, olives, cherries, I... and nuts. She was. No potatoes. Oh, fine. Jughead, do you mean to say in that young grocery store you got in there, there isn't a single potato? Not even a potato chip? <laughs> oh, great. Jughead, I got it. Hey, I know. Huh? I bet the potatoes are down in the basement. The basement? Sure. Lots of time Mom has a delivery boy leave the heavy stuff down the basement because we don't have enough room up here. Sometimes she buys potatoes in a 50-pound bag. 50 pounds? Yeah. She wished, Jug, you ought to be able to spare a pound or two if your mom buys 50 pound, pounds of potatoes at one time. Sure. Now, let's see. Soda bottles, ash cans, tin cans, old magazines, newspapers, charcoal, laundry baskets, soap, bleach, starch. Jug, I'm in a hurry. I'm looking. I'm looking, for... Archie. I'm looking. 
clothespins, wash sports club, bucket, cold but, shovel, screen, comic, warmer, grassy, paint, and roller skates. <laughs> no potatoes. Yes, Jug, I could tell. He was, I bet I know where they are. Where? On the back porch. The back porch? Sure. Mom keeps lots of stuff out on the back porch, especially in the wintertime. I'm sure that's just... Jughead. Huh? Jug, if it's all the same to you, I think I'll just run over to Betty's house and borrow some potatoes from her. Something tells me it'll save time. <laughs> Dear, shall I put it on the broiler? No, not till I season it, Fred. Uh, you start cutting up those string beans and yeah. uh, hand me that onion and the knife, please. Oh, all right. Here we are. Thank you. I wish Archie would get back here. Oh, he'll be back any minute, dear. Uh, I hope so. We don't have any time to spare. Uncle Joe will probably be here before we're ready. Oh, now, Mary, take it easy. Don't get so upset. Upset? Who's upset? Well, you are. You sound like you're going to burst out into tears any moment. Oh, Fred, don't be silly. It's the onions. Well, now, you shouldn't worry about... The onions? You mean that's what's making you cry? Of course, onions always do that. Oh, fine. And here I thought you were... Oh, dear. Fred, can that be Uncle Joe already? I don't know. I'd better go see. Fred, you finished cutting that onion, huh? All right, dear, I will. Oh, never know my day. See that a thing like this. Hello. Oh, for pity's sake, Jughead. What are you doing here? She was, are you crying, Mrs. Andrews? Yes, Jughead, but... Did you don't... have an argument with Mrs. Andrews or something? No, Did Jughead. he beat you? Jughead. Why, the beat? Jughead. Striking the board, the principal, Jughead. Go cry, Mrs. Andrews. Everything will be all right. Jughead. Here's my handkerchief. Jughead, will I won't let him hit you anymore. Jughead. Mr. Andrews did not hit me. Mary, who was that at the door? Huh? Oh, I get it now. Mm. You hit him. Yes, Jughead, I... And he probably oh, Jughead, deserves, I did not. He deserves what? You can. Who's the cat? You should be ashamed of yourself. Jughead, Jughead, will you please listen for just one second? Nobody hit anybody, and nobody is fighting with anybody. Mr. Andrews and I are crying because we're peeling gunions. Peeling gunions? <laughs> yeah, peeling gunions. Look, I mean... <laughs> peeling onions. She was is that all? I thought you were fighting. Well, we're sorry to disappoint you, Jughead, but we were not. Uh, Jughead, what are you doing here, anyway? Well, Archie was over at my house a few minutes ago for potatoes, and I couldn't find any. But after he left, I found them, so I brought them over in his bag. Oh, fine. Well, Jughead, as long as you're here, we'll put you to work. Okay, Mrs. Andrews. I'm awful sorry about thinking you were Mrs. Andrews for fighting. Now, Jughead, that's quite all right. I know you must feel embarrassed, but there's nothing to start crying about. Oh, I'm not crying, Mrs. Andrews. It's... Those onions, the Spanish, are still holding. She was. I sure hope Betty can lend me some potatoes. That jughead looked all over the house and then couldn't find a single... Why, spot. Archie, hello. Hello, Betty. I came over to ask a favor. Oh, of course, Archie, but you know I'm awfully glad to see you. You are? Uh-huh, I certainly am. Why? Well, my mother just started making dinner. Yes. And we're having a wonderful dinner. Shrimp cocktail first with ketchup. Do you like shrimps with ketchup or lemon? Uh, ketchup, but Betty, why... Oh, I do, too. And then we're having soup. Beef bouillon. Do you like beef bouillon? Oh, yes, Betty, but I'm in a little hurry now, and, and I... after don't... that, we're having roast beef. Mmm, I love roast beef. Yeah, me too, And but my be... mother makes the best roast beef in the world. Yes, Betty, but would you get to and the... And then for dessert, guess what? Oh, I give up. Homemade apple pie with ice cream. Oh, isn't that dreamy? <sighs> yes, Betty, very dreamy. And that sounds like a very fine dinner. But would you mind telling me why you're so glad to see me so I can tell you why I came over here in the first place? Oh, of course, Archie. I was just getting to that. The reason I'm glad to see you is that I was just talking about you. You were? Uh-huh. You see, my mother just ran out of potatoes, and she wanted me to go over to your house to borrow some. At... Archie, did I say something wrong? <laughs> Now we have everything on the stove. Yes, yes. Ah, you see? We'll be ready in no time. Well, we're still a long way from ready, dear, but so far, so good. 
Now, I want you and Jughead to stay right here and watch things while I go out and set the table. All right, then. That's easy. Yeah, easy as pie. Now, remember, the soup's in the pressure cooker, and the steak's in the oven, and the potatoes are in that pot, and uh, these are the string beans, right? Yeah. Yes, dear, I know. I now, know. be sure nothing boils over and burns. Don't worry, dear. We'll watch it. You just go right ahead and set the table. All right, and if Archie ever gets back here, send him out to help me. Yes, dear, I will. I will. <sighs> Well, Jughead, we might just as well sit down. We can watch this just as well sitting down as standing. Well, now what? Fred, then maybe Uncle Joe can... You answer the door? All right, Mary, I will. Now, well, Jughead, you keep an eye on things here. Okay, Miss Andrews. And for goodness sake, Jughead, don't let anything burn. I won't, Miss Andrews. It was the way Mr. Andrews talked, you'd think I was dumb. She was maybe I am. Well, I'll show him I can watch a few things cooking on a stove. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, I'm gonna make her mine. Oh, hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, I'm gonna... What's that noise? See the soup in the pressure cooker. Well, maybe it's supposed to make that noise. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. Prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make... I never heard one make that much noise before. Maybe it needs more water. I'll open it and see. Just lift this gadget here. I'll turn the pot cover this way. Oh, boy, it exploded. Soup it all over the ceiling. I'll watch it. Betty, I don't know what we're going to do with all these potatoes, but we certainly can use your help. Oh, I'll be glad to help, Mr. Andrews. Yeah, good. I... This... Hmm. That's funny. What's funny? Can it possibly be raining in here? Raining? Yeah, I just felt a few drops on my neck. I... Oh, good grief. Look. Look, it is raining. Look at that ceiling. Oh, but Mr. Andrews, it can't be raining. The sun's shining outside. Well, then something's leaking upstairs. That ceiling is sopping wet. Mr. Andrews. We've broken the water pipe. Mr. Andrews. The bathroom must be flooded. Mr. Andrews. The whole ceiling may come down. Mr. Andrews, I think it's soup. Of course it is. That's what I've been saying. It's soup. Betty, what soup? That stuff dripping off the ceiling. Now, Betty, how would soup get on a ceiling and... Well, what do you know? It is soup. Hmm, golly. Vegetable soup. Yeah, but who ever heard of a ceiling leaking yeah, soup? I do ever do anything as stupid as opening a pressure cooker while it was steaming. He was, I didn't know, Mrs. Andrews. Oh, pressure cooker, Mary. Did you say pressure cooker? Yes, I said pressure cooker. Jughead exploded the soup all over the place. Oh, so that's how the soup got on the ceiling. Well, and all the time I thought we busted the water pipe. Fred, I don't know. <laughs> but think it was soup. Fred, <laughs> the I... funniest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> soup all over the ceiling. <laughs> Fred, the soup was all over the ceiling. It's now all over your best soup. Yes, I know. And whoever heard of getting soup all over your... My best soup. Oh, no. Oh, Mary, just look at this suit. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Andrews. On you, it looks good. Drug head, you... Fred, put that pressure cooker down. Boy, if I don't find some potatoes quick, Dad's going to boil me instead. <laughs> I sure hope Veronica's got some. I never knew it could be so hard to borrow a few measly potatoes. Just a few me... Why, Archie, hello. <laughs> Hi, y'all, Archikin. Hmm. <laughs> Also nice to see you all, Archie. Dear. <laughs> Gee, it's nice to see you too, Veronica. But, Veronica, there's something I have to ask you. Oh, really? And, well, I, I don't know exactly how to say it. Well, maybe I can help you ask me. Huh? 
first come in, Archie, and close the door. But what's that got to do with what I want? See? Now, put your arms around me. But, Veronica, I... I just don't want you to be bashful. Now, go ahead. Put your arms around me. Well, okay. Now, hold me tight. Well, okay. And look me in the eyes. Okay. Now, just what did you want to ask me? Well, do you... That is, would you... Go ahead, Archie. What do you want? Potatoes. What? Yes, sir. Potatoes. A pound of potatoes. Is that what you want to ask me for? Uh Uh-huh. Well, my Uncle Joe's coming to dinner, and he eats so much, we need more potatoes. Archie Andrews, it so happens we have a barrel of potatoes. Big ones, small ones, and medium-sized ones. But I wouldn't give you a potato if you hadn't eaten for a week. Good, I haven't... Huh? Gee whiz, now what did I say? There's but, no point fretting and fuming about that soup. It was an accident, and accidents will happen. Yes, dear, I know, but why do they all have to happen to me? That's what I want to know. Why do Fred, they? for the last time, forget it. We don't have time to argue with Jughead now. No. Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret will be here any minute, and I don't have the table set yet. So, for pity's sake, go upstairs and change your suit before they get here. Oh, me, all right, dear, all right. I'll go change my suit. But after this is over, I want to have a long talk with that jughead. <sighs> oh, pay no attention, Mr. Andrews' children. He'll forget all about it in no time. I hope so. But golly, Mrs. Andrews, what about the ceiling? It's still all covered with soup. Oh, Betty, we don't have time to worry about the ceiling now. It stopped dripping, and that's all that matters. Now, I want to finish setting the table, so will you and Jughead please watch these things on the stove? Oh, sure, Mrs. Andrews, we will. All right, uh, those string beans should be about done now, and you can take them off the flame. But uh, leave them in the pot so they'll stay warm. Oh, all right, Mrs. Andrews. And Jughead, try not to explode anything else. Yes, Mrs. Andrews. Ouch, this pot is hot. Hand me that kitchen towel, Jug. Oh, here you are. Thanks, I'll just move this pot of string beans over here. There we are. Now... Oh, Mom, Mom, I didn't get any... Well, she was Betty and Jughead. Oh, I... Hi. Did... What are you two doing here? Well, after you left, I found some potatoes, so I brought them over. <laughs> Me too. Oh, great. You mean I've been running all over town for potatoes, and you had some here all the time? Uh-huh. Oh, fine. But where's Mom and Dad? Well, your father had to go change his suit, and your mother's setting the table in the dining room. Well, I'm glad everything's under control anyway. I... I... She went. What's the matter? What smells? I don't smell anything. Quit looking at me. Jughead, I'm not looking at you, but I tell you, something smells funny. Like something burning. But, Archie, nothing's burning. Your mother just looked at the steak and the potatoes and... <gasps> oh, golly, the towel! She was it is burning. Oh, boy. Oh, one corner of the towel is on fire. She was just quick, quick. Grab the towel and throw it in the sink. I'll burn my hand. No, you won't throw it right across the room. Okay, look out. There. Atta boy, Jughead. Oh, boy. Jug, it landed on the curtain. Golly. He was, I missed the sink. Oh, boy, the curtains are burning, too. Quick, throw some water on them. How? You, you can't get near the sink. Oh, golly. He was, what do we do? Marsh, the Venetian blinds are oh. going to catch on fire. Oh, boy, Jug, Jug, quick, quick. Jug, Jug, go out the back door there and, and get the garden hose. Jug, Jug, quick. I, I was washing the car with it this morning. Get it. Okay, I'll... Hurry up, Jug. Oh, golly. Calm down, Betty, calm down. Jug will have the hose in a second. I'll... Oh, I'll... goodness, what's I... going on here? Veronica, what are you doing here? I came over to apologize for losing my temper. See, but who started that fire? Never mind, Veronica, but you better not stand near that door because Jug's liable to... Stand back, Oh, Jug, you're still getting me all wet. Stand back, everyone, stand back. Jug, put it on the fire. You're getting me all wet. Out of my way, everyone, out of my way. Jug, turn it around. Oh, oh. how'd that fire start? Jug, put the hose on the oh. fire. What's going on here, anyway? I... You now! I'm getting all wet! George had turned the hose the other I way! Can, can you can... George had, please! Veronica, I... I... Ma- Mary, don't... But Betty, will you... Look... Veronica, Veronica, look... Veronica, quiet! 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 There. That's better. Now listen to me, all of you. This nonsense has gone far enough. Too far, in fact. 
Yes, Mr. Andrews. Yes, dear. Yes, Dad. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, that fire is out, so Jughead, get that hose that dickens out of here before we float away. Okay, Mr. Andrews, okay. Oh, all right. <sighs> now, I have never in all my days seen such goings on. Just because we happen to get a phone call that we're getting some unexpected company for dinner, what happens? Everybody gets all excited. Everybody starts running around, exploding soup on the ceiling, starting fires, bringing in garden hoses, and generally acting like... Like the water's turned off. Like the water's turned off. But no! Oh, Jughead, be quiet. She was, what did I say? Too much. Now, listen to me. If you girls are too wet to go home that way, go upstairs, borrow some dry clothes from Mrs. Andrews' closet, and then go home, because we are expecting company any minute. And I still intend to sit down to a peaceful dinner, even if we don't have any soup, even if the kitchen is all wet, and even if the curtains are burned. Yes, Miss Andrews. And Jughead, the same goes for you. Yes, Mr. Andrews. All right. Now, Archie, get a mop and get... Oh, good grief. That's probably Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret now. Oh, dear. Fred, what'll we do? Now, 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 Mary, there's nothing to get excited about. Oh. They'll understand that we had a little accident. Well, Besides, all they have to do is wait in the living room a few minutes until we get the kitchen cleaned up. Then we can have dinner just as if nothing had happened. Sure, Mom. All right, Mary, dear. Now, 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 try smiling, you two. And quit looking like the world had come to an end. <laughs> yes, dear. Well, hello folks. <laughs> well, well, Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret. <laughs> How are you folks? <laughs> well, dear, you got here right in time for dinner. Dinner? Did you say dinner? Yes, sir, a steak dinner and all that. But, Fred, there must be some mistake. We had just finished dinner when I called you. Just finished it? You mean... Oh, no! We'll return to Archie and the Andrews family in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word to you parents. It's a proud day for moms and dads when their children graduate from college. College. Imagine. Some parents may be pardoned for being proud of themselves as well as of their children. And I mean the mothers and fathers who, ten or so years ago, were wondering how in the world they'd ever get the money together for college tuition. And the point is, they did it with the help of government bonds. Today, we call them savings bonds. Yes, sir, four for every three you put in in only ten years. Savings bonds, as fine a way to save these days as it ever was. The way to buy them and buy them regularly is through the payroll savings plan where you work. This is an automatic, sure plan for saving in savings bonds. Just a little every payday, and in only ten years, you too may be the proud parents of a college graduate. Give it some thought, good people. Then you'll find many a good reason why you too should join the payroll savings plan. And now, back to the Andrews. It's later that day, Uncle Joe and Aunt Margaret and the twins have come and gone, and peace and quiet have finally returned to the Andrews' home. Oh. Mary, I have never seen such a day as this. Oh, neither have I, dear. Oh, me too. I... Oh, oh fine. I'll get it. No. Gee, I still can't understand how it all happened. Neither can I, Archie. But it's over and done with, so let's just forget the whole thing. The less I hear about Sunday dinner, the better I'll like it. Me too. I've heard just... Oh, dear. Well, Mary, what now? Fred, that was Prunella Jenkins. What did she want? She wanted to know why we never showed up for dinner. She invited us over to her house, and I forgot all about it. Oh, no. Oh, my God. You've been listening to another chapter of The Adventures of Archie Andrews, written by Carl Jampel and based on the copyrighted feature appearing in Archie Comics magazine. Archie was played by Bob Hastings, Jughead by Harlan Stone. Mom and Dad Andrews are played by Alice Sherman and Arthur Cole, Veronica and Betty by Rosemary Rice and Yvonne Mann. This program is produced and directed by Kenneth McGregor. Listen next Saturday for more of The Merry Adventures of Archie Andrews. This is Bob Sherry wishing you all a very pleasant weekend. So long. Meet 
come in. It will be heard immediately over most of these stations. That was Archie from 1948, and now a very cold, wintry episode of The Aldridge Family. This episode is from January 22nd, 1942. Henry! Henry Aldridge! Coming, Mother! The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone. Entertainment for all the family, brought to you by Postum, a tempting, wholesome drink for all the family. Postum. Friends, before we join the Aldrich family, listen. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, Doesn't that sound just like your bedroom clock when it's dark and late at night and you're lying there unable to sleep? Well, if it does, if you know how the seconds drag when you're kept awake, just think of this. Coffee may be robbing you of sleep. Perhaps you'd sleep better if you drank Postum instead. Yes, even though many folks can drink coffee in sleep, Many others, perhaps you among them, cannot. So do as millions have done. If you think coffee keeps you awake, switch to Postum because it's stimulant-free. Because Postum, unlike coffee, contains nothing that could cause sleeplessness. Just drink fragrant, flavorful Postum instead of coffee. And after a fair trial of, say, two short weeks, see if you aren't enjoying good, sound sleep again and lots of it. See if you don't say, thank goodness for Postum. Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, Penrod Schofield. They're more than boys in books because the things they say and do are things real boys say and do. And now, Henry Aldrich joins the ranks of these typical American youngsters. A boy from your town, perhaps from your own home. Now it is evening. We find Henry in the Aldrich living room with his father and mother. Father, could I bother you for just a second? What about? All I want to ask is to do something for me. What is it? Well, first, are you sure you're comfortable? Comfortable? Yes, sir. Can I get you anything first? Mm, You may. You may get me my pipe. Yes, Father. I'd be very glad to. Where is it? It's apparently upstairs. Tell me what it is you want. Oh, no, Father. I'd rather you have everything you want before I bring up what I'm going to. Sam, did the Johnsons say definitely they're coming over? They did, Alice. And I suppose, of course, they'll want to play bridge. They certainly will. Sometimes I wonder whether the Johnsons ever do anything but play bridge. Well, you can't blame them much. There's just the two of them. Well, sometimes I wonder if they realize what they've missed by not having any children. Here's your pipe, Father, and your tobacco. Oh, thank you. And all I want to ask you for is only 25 cents. Henry. Yes, Mother? I thought I said you were not to have that 25 cents. Not even from Father? Not even from anyone, dear. Alice, are there any matches out in the kitchen? Yes, Sam. But, Mother, this is the first time I've ever taken Loretta out, and it's going to be a swell dance. You don't want me to be embarrassed, do you? I thought you had the tickets. I have. But how am I going to buy her a hot dog afterwards? I'm sorry, but I don't know. Well, look, Mother, would you be willing to tell me why you won't advance it? Henry, I have nothing more to say. Nothing whatever? You won't even give me a hint as to why you won't? Mother, is it because you don't believe in letting me have money in advance or because you don't think the hot dog would be good for me? (laughs) Mother? It happens to be both. All right, I've got an answer for both. Henry, dear, if you don't care enough to do anything for me, I certainly can't be expected to do anything for you. Mother, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm not surprised. Well... Is it something you asked me to do and I forgot, or something I shouldn't have done and you found out I did? Never mind. Because it isn't as though I were asking you for 50 cents or 35 cents or even 30. All I'm asking is enough to buy a hot dog for each of us and a root beer for Loretta. I'd rather eat mine dry than ask you for one cent more. How are you going to get Loretta to the dance? I think there'll be room in Jimmy's car, Mother. All I have to do is keep trying until his phone answers. 
Well, don't you think it's time you made some definite arrangements? You don't suppose Father would... Uh, you don't suppose he... You don't suppose I'd what? Nothing, Father. Mother, will you tell me this? Is it because I forgot to hang up my pajamas? Henry, if you're going to take Loretta to the dance, the thing for you to do is call Jimmy and see whether he has room for you. Yes, Mother. I'm going to write out to the phone now. And I'm only sorry I didn't do whatever it is you want me to do for you. Alice, what was it he didn't do? Never mind, Sam. It's completely unimportant. Is this the only deck of cards we have? No, dear. There's another deck right here on the table. I asked him distinctly. It was the last thing I asked him to do before he left the house. And he came right back from the store without it. Without what? Never mind. Well, what was it? The ginger ale. For tonight? Yes, Sam. I asked him distinctly to get six bottles of ginger ale. And, of course, that was the one thing he didn't bring. Well, now, Alice, don't let it upset you like that. You know the Johnsons, once they start playing bridge, they'll forget they're thirsty. Sam, it isn't just the ginger ale. It's the fact that Henry can be so wrapped up in himself that he never even thinks of anything else. Well, I'll give him a little talking to. Now, Sam, you're not even to mention it. Let him find out for himself how thoughtless he's been. Where's the score pad? Oh, right there in that stand drawer. As a matter of fact, I'd even plan to ask you to drive him and Loretta to the dance tonight. Well, it's a good thing you didn't. I'm settled here for the evening. I'm simply going to make this a lesson for him. Mother, why do you suppose Jimmy Bartlett doesn't answer? I'm afraid, dear, that's your problem. Yes, Mother, I'll find somebody that'll take us. And, Mother, before I forget it, when I came home, the icebox was full. I beg your pardon? So I left it outside the back door in the snowbank. You left what out there? Don't you remember? Your ginger ale. The ginger ale? You got the ginger ale? Yeah, sure. Didn't you want it? Well, Henry, that's fine. I wonder whether Homer Brown would have room for us in his car. Henry, uh, Sam, do you have 25 cents in change? 25 cents? I have three dimes. Well, dear, give them to Henry. To I, Mother? 30 cents? Henry, (laughs) Henry, if you and Loretta are going to dance all evening, the least you'll want afterwards is something to eat. But, Mother, wouldn't you like to tell me first what it is I did that you didn't want to give it to me for? Henry, as I said before, let's forget the whole thing. Sam, is there any reason why you couldn't drive Henry to the dance? What, sir? Drive me? Yes. Drive Henry? Yes, dear. It won't take you 20 minutes. But, Alice, the Johnsons are coming. My goodness, all you have to do is drive Henry over and pick up Loretta and drop drop them at the country club. But, Alice, don't you realize the roads are banked with snow? The plows have opened everything up, Father. (laughs) Pretty nearly. (laughs) Of course they have. Of course they have. Now, Sam... Henry, get your things on. Yes, Father. Well, gee whiz, boy, I wanted to take Loretta in our car all the time. It's twice as good as George Bigelow. Now, suppose the Johnsons get here before I get back. What harm will it do if the bridge game has to wait five minutes? As a matter of fact, if they had a boy of their own, they'd understand. Where are my gloves? They're right here on the radiator, Father. No, oh, I'll answer the phone. You two get started. Goodbye, Mother. And thanks very much. Come on, Henry. Don't slip on the porch. Uh, Goodbye. Have a good time, and thank you for getting the ginger ale. Hello? Hello. Is this Elm 303? Yes. Who is this? This is Mrs. Aldrich. Oh, hello, Mrs. Aldrich. Hello. Who is this? Hi, this is Loretta. Can I speak with Henry? Henry? Uh, Will you wait just a minute, please? Loretta, I just looked out the window, dear. Henry and his father just this minute pulled away. Oh, he's on his way over to get me? Yes. Well, maybe I should have called earlier. What for? I'm way out here. Where? Oh, that's all right. My folks will tell him when he gets there. Well, dear, where are you? I'm out at my aunt's. It's only six miles out in the middle town road, though. Six miles? Yes. Does Henry have chains? I don't think he does. Are the roads quite bad? Oh, no. They're not bad. He's bound to get here sooner or later. Hello, Loretta. Can you hear me? Yes, Agnes. I was just wondering whether you started for the dance yet. I'm still waiting for Henry. For Henry? Henry Aldrich? Yes. But, Loretta, aren't you going with George? Oh, no, not tonight I'm not. Well, my goodness. Oh, I don't have any crush on Henry. I just thought it was time I went out with somebody else. Why? Well, I just decided it would put Georgie in his place for a change. What are you going to wear? My light blue. Your light blue. Have I ever seen it? No. Oh, I've got to hang up, Agnes, or Henry may go right by. Father, is this the country club? I don't know. Open the window so I can see. 
No, I guess this isn't it yet. We made pretty good time, Mr. Aldridge, even if you have only been able to go ten miles an hour. Yes. Uh, Henry, is that a car right ahead of us? No, how could it be? Yes! Yes, gee whiz! Hold on! Mr. Aldridge, what are we doing? Nothing. Just trying to stop. (sighs) Gee whiz, here we are. (sighs) Turned right around and facing the other way. Isn't this the country club? Oh, yes. Gee, Father, it's lucky you skidded or we would have gone right by it. You mean we're here? Sure. Well, I certainly want to thank you, Mr. Aldrich. I never had such an exciting ride. And I hope, Father, you won't be too late getting back to the house. That's all right. Just get out of the car. Yes, sir. Don't slip, Loretta. Henry, just look. What's the matter? My gracious, look at everybody going in. What's the matter with them? All the girls are wearing long dresses, Henry, and you told me it was informal. It is informal. But it couldn't be, Henry. It just couldn't be if they're all wearing long dresses. Are you out yet? Mr. Aldrich, I can't get out. Why not? I'm not dressed. What's that? (laughs) Well, look, Loretta, why don't we just stick our heads inside and see whether there aren't some others informal? Henry, I'd die if I went in there. George Bigelow and everyone is going to be in there. I'd simply die. Why would you die? Go ahead in and dance. Have a good time. But, Mr. Aldrich, Henry told me. He told me distinctly I wouldn't have to dress. But, Loretta, Homer Brown told me distinctly it was informal. He said, don't let your girl dress. She'll only be conspicuous. Well, what are you going to do? Well, that's what I don't know. Look, Loretta, couldn't we... Couldn't we sort of... Sort of what? Henry, I have guests back at the house that are waiting to play bridge. What are you going to do? Well, Mr. Aldrich, it isn't as though you'd have to drive me all the way back to my aunt's. My evening clothes are at my own house. That's hardly three miles from here. Loretta... Why don't you just walk in with your head up and show the whole town you don't care what they think? But I do care, Mr. Aldrich. All right, why don't you and Henry go to a movie? But, Father, look, I've got the tickets for the dance. Henry, the Johnsons can't even play one hand of bridge until I get there, and it's been an hour and ten minutes since I left the house. But couldn't they be playing some other game, Mr. Aldrich? The Johnsons don't play any other game. Well, look, Father, could you step out of the car for a second? While I speak to you confidentially. Loretta, would you mind closing the door? You aren't going to leave me here, are you? Uh, Loretta, close the door. Yes, Mr. Aldrich. Now then, Henry, as long as we're alone, may I say one thing? Father, all I want to ask you is to loan me enough money to hire a taxi. Why? To take her home while she changes. Henry, I don't even have my wallet with me. Don't you have any change at all? I do not. Father, this is the first time I've ever taken her out. She's really George Bigelow's girl. You don't want me to give her the the wrong impression of our family, do you? Henry, if you'd listened to Homer more carefully, you wouldn't be in this predicament. But, Father, I'm sure he said it was to be informal. He couldn't have, son. I just saw Homer go into the clubhouse one minute ago with his own girl. Was she in a long dress? Of course she was. She was. I don't know what made me think he did say it. Because, son, you don't pay attention. You're like your mother. You simply jump at conclusions. But, Father, couldn't you make an exception just this once if I promise to listen very carefully in the future? Henry, I cannot. This is your fault. Hey, Henry. (laughs) Who's that? It's Homer Brown. I just want to tell you I'm sorry I gave you that bum steer. I thought it was going to be informal. Homer, did you tell Henry it was going to be informal? Yeah, and boy, I bet his girl hates me. She hates you. Gee whiz, Homer. Henry, just forget the whole thing. I'm only telling him how I feel, Father. Get in the car. Hurry up. Where are we going? Over to Loretta's while she changes her clothes. Mrs. Aldrich. Uh, Yes, Mrs. Johnson. Isn't that a car I see driving up in front of the house? Uh, One moment while I look out of the window. You mean Mr. Aldrich is finally back? No, whoever it is is getting out and going in next door. Oh, I wonder whether he plays bridge. Well, I suppose you have to expect these things when you have children. Well, I'm almost positive Sam will be driving in any minute. Frank, it would be much easier on you if you'd stop shuffling those cards. That's all you've been doing all evening. I thought I'd just have them ready. There he is. Is that the front door? It's the telephone. He's probably calling to say he'll be right here. Hello? Hello, is this Mother? Yes. May I speak to Father, please? With your father? He isn't here, dear. He isn't? Well, where is he? I have no idea. We've been waiting here for him all evening. Well, maybe he hasn't had time to get there. What's happened, Henry? It was formal and Loretta wasn't. What's that? <laughs> she had to make a change, Mother, and the roads are rather icy. But when he got us back here to the dance, he started right for home. How long ago? About an hour ago. An hour ago? Well, maybe it was a half an hour ago. Well, even so, dear, he should certainly be here by now. Mother, I wouldn't be worried. The front wheel doesn't interfere with his driving very much. The, the front wheel? 
real. The right one. And the reason I called, Mother, when Father left here, Homer Brown said he'd take Loretta and me home. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and be sure to tell Homer to drive carefully. But, Mother, the trouble is, since then, I've had a fight with Homer. You have? And Loretta's had a fight with Homer's girl. Well, Henry, was that necessary? It was really on account of Father, Mother, so don't you think he'd be willing to come and get us when the dance is over? Henry, your fat father can't possibly go out again. Wouldn't the chances enjoy coming over with him? You just ask around and find someone there at the dance that can take you home. But suppose I can't. Henry, the thing for us to worry about right now is your father. Oh. Please go back and ask some of the boys whether they can't help you. Yes, Mother. And if we don't hear from you again, we'll know you've found someone. Yes, Mother, I'll try. Goodbye. Goodbye. John is away. I'm sorry to say that wasn't Sam. No? Well, you aren't worried, are you, my dear? Oh, no. Mr. Johnson, do you have change on your car? Well, for once, it isn't Henry who's missing, but his father. And since he's so badly needed at the bridge table, we can only hope that he'll turn up soon. Meanwhile, let me ask you something about your dining table. Do you think that Postum should have a place on it only if coffee keeps you awake? Well, if you do, I can only say you're missing something. You're missing a mealtime drink that, for downright enjoyment alone, is one of the grandest things you and your family ever tasted. You'll say so yourself once you try Postum. For a good hot cup of Postum gives you a fragrance and flavor that have made it the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes. And mind you, it doesn't taste like coffee or like tea. Postum's flavor is distinctive. And it's every bit as delicious as it is different. Economical. Still selling at its usual low cost of less than one half cent a cup, Postum is one drink your whole family can enjoy and at the same time ease the household budget. So for enjoyment and economy, serve steaming delicious Postum to grown-ups and children alike and find out why no drink is quite so good as Postum for all the family. But getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Mrs. Aldrich, worried and embarrassed over the tardy return of her husband, who has driven Henry to the country club dance, continues to wait without any news from him. Meanwhile, Henry is having his own troubles. As the scene opens, we find him dancing with his girl. Oh, you're a wonderful dancer, Henry. I am. Why do you keep looking over your shoulder all the time? No reason. I just want to see who's here. What's the matter, Henry? What's the matter? What do you mean? You probably said ten words during this whole dance. Well, the fact is I'm worried. What about? Do you suppose if we phoned your father, he'd come after us? Well, he isn't home tonight. Oh. Well, then that's out. Can't your father come after us? Oh, yes. He'd be glad to. I've just been asking a couple of fellas in case. You know, my father wanted to play a little bridge. He was hoping to. Oh, you know, I like your father, Henry. You do? Uh-huh. When he first looks at you, you think, my goodness, he's mad at me. But then it turns out he's just apparently thinking of something else. All in all, he's pretty good. Doesn't he ever really get mad? Well, don't misunderstand me. He can lose his temper. You know, if he's planning to use his tools and he doesn't know I put them away carefully someplace else where he doesn't happen to know where it is, and boy, then does he tear around. Really? For the whole next hour, you want to keep out of his way. Really? Sure. But he never gets what you could really call mad. I sort of wish I could find someone to take us home. Henry, I have an idea. Why couldn't George Bigelow drive us home? George Bigelow? Yes. George Bigelow? Why should we ask him? Why not? He's here all alone, Henry, and he's got his car. Sure. I noticed he was here all alone. I noticed. Now, Henry, don't be silly. There he is right over there. George! Oh, George! Listen, Loretta, if you call him, he'll only want to dance with you again. Oh, he hasn't danced with me so much. Gee whiz, he's cut in on almost every dance. Well, I didn't ask him to, Henry. Hey, Loretta! Yes, George? Come on out on the porch. I want to show you something. George, you wouldn't mind driving us home, would you? No, Loretta, it won't be necessary. No, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind at all. I said it wouldn't be necessary. And anyway, Loretta's staying way out at her aunt's tonight. Well, what of it? All I have to do is drop you first, and then I'll take Loretta home. What's that? 
Listen, I brought Loretta here, and I'm going to take her home. Of course you are. I'm just going to help you. No, you're not. I'm going to take her home myself. Now, boys, wait. Now, wait. listen, Aldrich. Now, listen yourself. <laughs> It is. Oh, my goodness, Sam. Where have you been? Where have I been? Where haven't I been? Well, dear, are you all right? Of course I am. Why shouldn't I be? Well, what have you been doing all this time? I'll tell you all about it later. Let's go in and start playing bridge. I'll just wash my hands. Start playing bridge? Where's Mr. Johnson? What do you mean, where is he? Sam, he drove out to get you. What did you do that for? Because Mrs. Johnson and I were worried about you. Well, now, Alice, why did you do a thing like that? Mrs. Aldridge, has anything happened to Frank? Well, no, dear. Of course nothing has. Sam, you must have seen him. He took the road right out to the country club. Well, I took the shortcut over Kendall Hill. That's where I had the trouble. What trouble? I couldn't get over it. You mean it's... You mean it's that slippery out? It is. And you don't think you ought to do anything about it? Do anything? What could I do? Well, Sam, I think if he went out for you, the least you can do is go out for him. But, Alice, you should never have sent him. But I thought something happened to you. You were simply jumping at conclusions. You weren't able to get over Kendall Hill, were you? No, but all I did was slide down it backwards. Well, that's all the more reason you ought to go out and get him. Alice. To tell you the truth, Mr. Aldrich, I am worried. Where did I put my coat? Right here on the banister. And, Sam, drive carefully, because I'm going to worry about you every minute you're gone. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'd just as soon put the car up tonight and not get it out all winter. Oh, just a minute. Hello? Hello, is this you, Father? It is. Well, this is Henry. Father, you'll have to come out here and get me when the dance is over. What's that? I'm sorry, Father, but it's an emergency. My whole reputation is at stake. What about? I'm just not going to let him get away with it, that's all. Henry. I'll explain everything when I see you. Goodbye. But, Henry. 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 What are you waiting for, Henry? Aren't you going home? Sure, Homer. I'm waiting for Loretta. Where is she? She's upstairs in the powder room getting her things on. Oh. That's funny, because if I remember correctly, I heard George Bigelow say something about taking Loretta home. You're crazy, Homer. There you are, jumping at conclusions again. Loretta's up there mending a hem on her skirt. Well, George was talking about it, Henry. And incidentally, I wonder where Agnes is. I hope she's ditched you. Well, gee, darn near everybody else has gone home. Have I you waiting, Homer? Yes. So long, Henry. You can still come home with us if you want to. That's all right, Homer. My father will be here in a minute. Agnes, did you happen to notice whether Loretta is almost ready? Loretta? I don't know, Henry. I didn't see her upstairs. You didn't? Well, she's up there all right, Agnes. She's mending her hem. Remember what I heard George say, Henry. You're crazy. So long, man. Good night. Good night. Young man, would you mind stepping over to one side while I sweep up here? Oh, excuse me. Did you all have a nice dance tonight? Well, pretty good. Everybody seemed to. Why don't you go home? Well, I'm going to just as soon as my father gets here. Would you mind not standing in front of this piano? I want to close it up. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my, look at those ashes. Have you seen anyone up in the powder room? Who, your father? No, my girl. Loretta Taylor. Do you know her? I don't know, but she ain't up there. Are you sure? I certainly didn't see anybody, and I just came down from there ten seconds ago. You didn't see anyone at all? No, sir. Oh. Now, young man, if you'll stand over to the other side, unless you want to get your feet wet, I'll start mopping. Sure. There isn't more than one powder room up there, is there? There never has been. Say, I don't suppose I should ask you, but I ain't going to be long cleaning up here. You couldn't give me a lift home, could you? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't think I'll wait any longer myself. Oh. Your girl ditched you? Oh, no, no. I guess she didn't want to bother my father. So she just went home. Incidentally, in case my father comes here after I've left, will you tell him I'm walking home? Oh, sure. I'd phone him, only... Gee whiz, I spent all my nickels phoning home as it is. (laughs) 
Now then, Mr. Johnson, I guess you're waiting for me. Yes, sir. It's your turn. Well, now let's see. No, I can't do it that way. You stuck? No, I'll figure this out. You certainly got me in a jam here. Well, I was only following your lead. Yes. Well, let me try it this way. I'll put my car in reverse, and you see if you can push me. I don't think that will work. Excuse me, mister, but could you give me a lift? What's that? Gee whiz, father, is that you? Henry, where did you come from? I'm walking home, so you won't have to go all the way out to the clubhouse and get me. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. Are both of your cars stuck here? Uh, Henry, stand back. We're going to try it once more. Easy, easy, that isn't going to do it. No, I guess it isn't. Father, wait a second. Here comes a car. Wait, I'll flag them. Let me. Hey! Hey, can you give us a hand? What is it you want? Is that you, Homer? Of course it is. Well, can you help pull either one of these cars out of here? How? There's nothing to it. All you have to do is... Now, wait a minute, Henry. Let me tell him. Just back up behind Mr. Johnson's car real slowly. Is there room for me to get in there? Is there? Henry, is there? What, Homer? Hey, Homer, what'd you do that for? I thought I had room. That's it. Jumping at some more conclusions. Sam, do you want me to turn out the light? I'll turn it out. You in bed? Yes, dear. Am I tired? Well, I should think you'd be dead. What did the Johnsons say when they went home? Not a thing. They simply put on their coats and left. Without even looking at a bridge deck? You know, Sam, it's really a pity the Johnsons have no family. Then they'd understand how easy and natural it is to make sacrifices for them. Yes, I suppose you're right. Did Henry say anything to you about Loretta? Why, he didn't mention it to me. Well, I'm afraid, Sam, he was terribly hurt this evening. Father? Yes, Henry? Could I just thank you once more for all you've done for me tonight? You're very welcome, son. Now, please go to bed. Yes, Father. Wasn't it lucky that wrecking car got us out so quick? Yes, dear. Now, please go to bed. Your father's tired. Yes, Mother. Is that the telephone? Yes, turn on the light so I can find it. I've got it, Father. It's right here. Hello? Hello. Is Henry Aldrich there? Yes. Well, this is Loretta. Loretta? Yes. And I just want to say, Henry Aldrich, I think you're the meanest, most horrid person I've ever known in my life. What have I done? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't go home with George Bigelow. Who did you go home with? I didn't go home with anyone. I'm still here. At the clubhouse? Of course I am. And I've just simply got to get home, Henry. Well, just a minute. Father, have you gone entirely to sleep yet? Henry Aldrich will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, if coffee keeps you awake, see if you don't sleep better drinking Postum instead. You'll enjoy Postum's grand taste, you and your whole family. And as an all-family drink, you'll find Postum most economical. Still selling at its usual low cost of less than one-half cent a cup. So ask your grocer for Postum tomorrow. Father, I just got a note from Loretta. Did you? It's about our going back for her the other night. Yes? She says, words will never express my appreciation, especially of the behavior of your father. Not once did he complain. Not once did he embarrass me by so much as looking in my direction. Not once did he even say a word. Henry, your father must be a very wonderful, silent man. Listen again next week to the Aldrich family, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Dan Seymour saying you will enjoy fragrant, flavorful Postum. And remember... Postum contains no stimulants. It cannot keep you awake. Good night. Why all the cheering? Haven't you heard? Listen, it's hot off the griddle. Log cabin syrup. America's favorite table syrup is selling at money-saving, big-value prices. Remember, you get the same matchless log cabin syrup, same high quality, same mouth-watering, old-fashioned flavor, 
so delicious with piping hot pancakes or waffles. Tomorrow, buy Log Cabin Syrup from your grocer. You'll find prices on all three sizes are surprisingly low, well within your housekeeping budget. This is the National Broadcasting Company.